Hello, my name is Murray Pollock. I'm Managing Editor of Access International Magazine and this is a short presentation about access rental hotspots around the world. I'll start by looking a little at uh, the global construction equipment market projections for the coming years. Then I'll look at the global rental market, uh, the developing access rental markets and then finish up with some of the, the hotspots around the world for access rental. Why does the subject matter? Well, I think Western Europe and North America are relatively mature, highly competitive access rental markets. They're also currently in uh, having a difficult economic time. I think the developing economies are becoming larger, becoming more significant. Why does the subject matter? Well, I think Western Europe and North America are relatively mature, highly competitive access rental markets. They're also currently in uh, having a difficult economic time. I think the developing economies are becoming larger, becoming more significant. Those who are... So just quickly looking at uh, world economic growth 2009, it's clear where the growth is and where it isn't. Those projections were made just before the financial, uh, the recent financial um, problems so I think you can downgrade some of the, the growth figures but what's clear is that you've got South America, uh, the Middle East, uh, the rest of Asia, Russia um, which are the fastest growing markets. This is highlighted here again if you're looking at global construction equipment sales in unit terms this is of all types of equipment not just aerial platforms it's clear where the growth markets are you've got India and Russia at the bottom rising steadily becoming major markets and you've got the developed markets like uh, North America and Europe softening off and China the largest current market uh, with almost 300,000 annual units. Aggregate those into developed markets and developing markets and the, uh, the graph is, is a telling one. Developing markets almost equal uh, the, the the demand for construction equipment as the, the mature markets. And as you can see from that, it won't be long before developing markets are actually larger construction equipment markets than, uh, than North America and Japan and, and Western Europe. But then if you look at the rental market, which is uh, a determinant on the development of access equipment, you can see that even though 50% of the construction equipment sales are in developing markets, currently only 3% of the global 90 billion uh, equipment rental industry actually comes from markets outside the developing areas. Europe and North America represent almost 90% of the equipment rental market, and then you've got Japan with 9% and Australia, the other two major markets. So there's a long way to go before the rest of the world catches up in terms of rental maturity. Looking at the developing access rental markets, assessing the potential is very difficult to do. Um, you just have to look at the difference between North America and Western Europe. It, nobody can quite explain why North America still has a, a higher um, per capita usage of aerial platforms in, than Western Europe. And then looking in Asia, even in some tiny areas, there are very different work practices. For example, in Macau, aerials have been used extensively in some uh, casino projects, but not in others. It depends among other things, on the nationality of the contractor. In an ideal world, you would have an access rental predictor based on a, a kind of matrix of construction activity, economic growth, cost of labour, health and safety focus. But even that's a very difficult thing to come up with. Labour rates alone are no guaranteed uh, indicator of uh, access rental activity. Perhaps it's a degree of urbanisation that's far more important. And if the equipment manufacturers have such a predictor, they're not um, sharing it well. Looking now at the developing mar markets, they're the obvious locations, Central, East and Southern Europe, um, Middle East, Latin South America, South Asia, Asia Pacific and Africa, parts of Africa. Looking at Central, East and Southern Europe, um, it's not a gravy train. It may well represent a potential for Western uh, rental companies, but it still represents just 3% of Europe's 23.5 billion equipment rental market. Um, it is developing faster than Western Europe did when it was at the same stage of development. It's learning from its uh, neighbours in the West. The rental companies are visiting uh, trade shows uh, and developing expertise in rental very quickly. 
Of course, that area has been pioneered by major Scandinavian companies, including Cramo, Rami Rent, and Pekaniska. And it's they've been joined now by some other Western players, for example, Spain's GAM, Rewild in the Netherlands, Height for Hire in Ireland, and also Caterpillar dealers. And in the former Yugoslavia and South Eastern, Eastern European area, you have uh, Venpa and Rewild who are blazing the trail there. You do now have some homegrown players, for example, you have LTEC in Russia and in Romania, Industrial Access. But the fleets are still, are still small, relatively speaking, LTECs. Could be as many as a thousand machines. Um, but the markets are growing. So, for example, in Romania, uh, the rental total rental fleet was around 100 units in 2003. It's now over 2,000 units. What I understand is that in most Eastern European markets, old equipment will no longer do. Um, it's not accepted by customers, and it also leads to uh, maintenance problems. And there's a shortage, I think, of qualified technicians to repair and maintain old machines. If you want to enter the Eastern European market, you do require local knowledge. For example, Romanian company access, industrial access, um, is moving into neighbouring markets, Bulgaria and, uh, and Moldova. Um, and the reason for the move into Moldova is to uh, to learn how to uh, as a kind of bridgehead uh, to the the bigger Ukrainian market. Competition is already growing in Romania. For example, rates have been falling; they're under pressure. Historically, they were higher than rates in Western Europe. And then looking at some of the other areas in the, in this uh, region, you've got Poland. Uh, you have some renters there already. HKL of Germany renting there. The big Scandinavians, uh, French. Caterpillar dealer Bergeron Monnayer uh, is establishing cat rental stores in Poland and also you have uh, GAM of Spain and Poland. Turkey is not a hot spot re yet for access but it's, it has enormous potential, there's an enormous amount of spending and infrastructure and it's so far been off the, the radar of the big uh, European renters. The Middle East, one rental company in Dubai told me it's overcooked. People see it as a solution to their problems. I think he was referring mainly to Europeans who are trying to establish businesses in, uh, in the Middle East. There has been a rapid influx of machines to Dubai in, uh, in the UAE, in particular in recent years, and that's focused attention on the wider Middle East area. Renters in Dubai say the rental fleet there is now around 1,500 machines, 500 elsewhere in, uh, in the United Arab Emirates. But rental prices, I'm told, are falling, particularly in, in the case of uh, the commodity products, if you like, the, the small electric scissors. It's becoming heavily overtraded, is one comment uh, to Access International. Again, the largest fleets here are tiny in comparison to those in Western Europe and North America. Around 500 units is, a lar is the biggest. And there are uh, there is a demand for, for larger machines, 25 metres to 40 metre booms and larger rough terrain scissors. That's for infrastructure projects, oil and gas, industrial and, uh, and petrochem. I understand that the spectacular construction in Dubai is, is still being maintained, um, probably now approaching its peak uh, and will continue for up to a decade or more. And what's happened in Dubai in recent years is likely to be reproduced uh, to some degree in Doha and Qatar, which is similarly ambitious uh, plans, possibly five years behind. Is the area actually too busy? Some contractors are deciding to buy equipment rather than, than rent. The uh, contractor CCC is an example. Other areas seen as good uh, opportunities are Amman and Jordan. Um, some rental Dubai rental players looking at Amman as, a, as an opportunity. And Saudi Arabia, another good potential area, not yet attracting the same number of uh, machines as, as Dubai. Lavenden has been growing its fleet there. But I think in general it's seen as a more difficult country to work in, uh, perhaps therefore representing an opportunity. Latin South America, uh, a region without any uh, significant domestic manufacturers of aerial platforms and none of the big uh, Western manufacturers have decided that the market is big enough yet to start manufacturing there. Brazil is the key hot spot th here uh, and it's a big uh, you're now seeing a big battle between the local players like Solaris and Mills Rental, now being joined by foreign firms including Spain's GAM and again Rewild of the Netherlands, who both opened up or are about to open up in Brazil. Solaris is, uh, has a major three-year investment plan to boost its uh, already large fleet, 1,300 machines. Um, 
the total Brazilian rental fleet is around 4,000 uh, units, uh, which compares to 8,000 in Las Vegas alone in the US, just giving you some perspective on the size of the market. And Mills Rental is competing now with Solaris, and it uh, has started investing in equipment this year and plans to spend around $60 million over the next uh, three, three and a half years. Brazilian rental companies are being helped not just by the enormous investment in infrastructure, but also by new work at height regulations which have the potential to, to, boost, to boost demand further. I'm told that local uh, new entrants to the market can't or aren't finding it easy to get capital to expand further, so perhaps this represents an opportunity for joint ventures with established players in other parts of the world. No other market currently offers the same opportunities as, uh, as Brazil. Uh, Chile has some fast-going rental firms, for example, SKC Rental, but the largest fleets are very small and it's an industry that's dominated by mining. Uh, Argentina was expanding rapidly in the late 90s, but it hasn't really recovered from, uh, from the slump and the largest fleets are still very small, around 400 machines. Mexico is a, an interesting area. It, like many countries in, uh, in Latin America, has a big infrastructure plan, $250 billion, and Goldman Sachs predicts that it will be the fifth largest economy in the world by 2040. Uh, United Rentals has some invol involvement here. GAM has just um, entered the country, including uh, some aerial platforms in its, in its fleet in Mexico City. So I think Mexico really is an opportunity for the future. South Asia, Asia Pacific, um, you can't believe what people can get done without machines. I'm told that the mature uh, access rental markets there are Hong Kong, Singapore, Korea, Japan and Taiwan. Mature in the sense that access rental has been around for 10 to 15 years. Developing markets, perhaps surprising, Vietnam and Thailand seen as, as good powered access uh, markets. And the longer term potential, China, Malaysia, Indonesia and India. Current hotspots include Macau, where casinos are being built. The work here is supposed to have peaked. And also Singapore, where there's a multi-billion entertainment facilities um, project being constructed at Sentosa Island. I think there are around five to 6,000 machines working in these and other Singapore projects. Obviously, the big opportunities over the next um, five to 10, 20 years are India and China, massive, fast-growing economies but labour rates are still low and focus on safety, although it's increasing, is not really at levels that are seriously impacting on, uh, on platform use. We asked one rental company in the region what would it take for China to start using aerials in big numbers. The answer was time, the presence of professional customers, people who understand the rental concept, and regulations that make it possible to import used equipment. Some foreign renters have already started to, uh, to operate in China. Hertz has just established a business in Shanghai. Japanese uh, rental companies in Beijing. Coates Hire in Australia has owners who are involved in the uh, Chinese market. And then you have cat rental stores and, and some Hong Kong rental companies also, interested, uh, also renting now in the southern areas of... Uh the market is changing though. Genie Industries is building a facility in China which will be operational next year and there are several domestic manufacturers, some of whom are becoming more aggressive in exporting their equipment. And it, there will also be the impact of urbanization, 20 to 50,000 new high-rise buildings by 2025. That suggests if nothing else is going to be a fantastic market for hoists and possibly mass climbers. What about India? Well, the largest rental fleet, access rental fleet, is around 200 machines on rent at MD and T, and the next largest fleet are fleets of 10 to 20 machines. India's biggest rental companies are focusing on uh, heavy equipment for infrastructure, and they have very few uh, aerials. In fact, the largest rental company in India is currently building a new headquarters, and it's not using aerials. Some rental companies in India say there's enormous potential with big projects with, uh, being done by Western firms like Tesco and Walmart, and they're looking for partnerships uh, with US, European uh, rental companies to, to bring machines into the Indian market. I think one indicator of the, the growth of the rental uh, concept in India, new, rent, new Indian Rental Association has just been created by six of the country's uh, rental companies. Africa, the 
focus of uh, attention here is very much in South Africa, not just because the, of the World Cup that's, uh, that's creating work on lots of new stadiums and, and, uh, and building infrastructure, but in general the construction market is busy, especially in things like power generation and, and infrastructure. It does have a big population, but the low levels of wealth and low labour costs are making it difficult for power access to expand rapidly. And current rental fleet is around two and a half to three thousand units, which is relatively small for a country of that size. And the largest fleets are around 300 to 400 machines. The current focus is on larger booms and diesel scissors. Growing demand for electric scissors last year fell off at the start of uh, 2008. The weaker RAND makes it more expensive to import equipment. Elsewhere in Africa, well, there are pockets of uh, big machines and petrochemical jobs in Algeria and Libya. Um, and some Spanish, Spanish and French renters are active in north of Africa, Algeria, Morocco. The conclusion, well, as one Hong Kong company said to me about Asia, you can pick fast food off the shelf, prepare a, prepare a full course meal for the evening, or write a recipe and cook another day. There are opportunities now and there are opportunities in, uh, that you can plan for in five or ten years. Just because the market is small now doesn't mean it will grow rapidly. It may be that it's already facing competitive pressures. Dubai, Romania and Brazil, although these are fast growing markets, you will see fierce competition from existing players. China and India, the big long term opportunities, even those working in these countries can't predict when they will start to expand rapidly from a power access point of view. The best opportunities may well be isolated and project based such as the Macau casinos or the Singapore Sentosa project. It's possible also to leverage relationships with, with big customers in your own domestic market. Killer2, Speedy Hire and GAM are all using this as a way to enter new uh, countries. And the final point, you do find entrepreneurs in emerging Asian, Asian countries and also I think in Latin America who are looking for willing partners and expertise and capital. Uh, you could try asking the manufacturers for, for contacts um, for, for local um, entrepreneurs. So thank you for listening. I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions, then give me a call. Uh, numbers here or drop me an, an email. I'm happy to help with any follow-up questions. Thank you.